be against the law. Look, this damn good. Watch out now. Good so baby, I feel real good, and I wish y'all would. Watch out now. Watch out. Good morning. Hello and welcome to today's Agency Phonics podcast episode number 74, hosted by me, Dan Archer, on behalf of Agency Nomics, whether you're listening live or you're watching this back. And we're going to be talking about agency positioning and standing out from the crowd in an industry with likely more than 25,000 different agencies and consultancies at all shapes and sizes. Differentiation is really, really important. And agencies can too often fall into the safe zone and try and be all things to to all people and not want to upset anyone and ultimately fail to stand for something specific and as a consequence, being known for nothing. For me, one agency which bucks that entire trend is today's guest, who has a very unique look and feel. But before we get started, I just want to do a couple of thank yous. Firstly, a huge thanks goes to our long-term partner whose support helps us host these podcasts and keeps the Agencynomics community free to access for agency owners and founders. So that's Sante Group. If your agency is thinking about your people and any health or well-being cover, lifestyle or benefit choices, then speak to them first. They generally are the best we've seen at helping you find the right benefits and well-being cover for independent agencies. You can find Paul Nugent or David Booth in the community. Just drop them a message to see how they might be able to help you or just simply visit NugentSante.com to find out a little bit more. Uh, And also thank you to the team at Cactus for producing today's episode as well for your enjoyment. They do take quite a bit of organizing and producing, and it wouldn't happen with the direct support of Louisa and Louise. So let's get into it and welcome my guest for today, John Keaton, founder and MD at digital marketing agency Dark Horse. Welcome, John. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Dan. Um, I'd love to start with uh, a little bit about, about the agency. So tell us a little bit about Dark Horse. Um, how you position it to kind of anyone who asks, because it's it's quite unique, it's quite standout, and as I said at the start, it's one of my it's one of my favourite examples. It's my go to example for standout cool. positioning. I'd love to hear a little bit more about kind of yeah who you are and um, how you position it. Cool. Yeah, we'll do that. So, um, I, I, to directly answer the question, I position it quite fluidly, which goes against a lot of convention, which goes against a lot of, you know, the textbooks that you should have mission, values, uh, value proposition, purpose, all this stuff kind of um, ironed out, which, you know, follows a process and, and, and you come out with um, your position at the end. Essentially, I, I don't think I'm... I've got that's my, that's my probably above my pay grade. Um, I'm a little bit too much of a simpleton to uh, uh, to do that. So I position it quite fluidly. And as much as you know, if someone was to ask me again in ten minutes, what is the position of the agency? It might be slightly different, but I'll uh, I'll do my best to keep a, a little bit of um, consistency. But to kind of really understand it, you need a little bit of context around um, the genesis of of Dark Horse, um, and that in, that informs the position. Um, so I've, I've got two companies, and the older of the uh, two companies is a um, is a direct marketing agency, which is my background. And through growing my direct marketing agency, which started in 2009, I inadvertently stumbled into digital in order to grow the direct um, marketing um, agency. So um, we used a couple of award winning agencies, you know, and, and back in those, you know, that time, kind of like mid you know 2015 that kind of time everything was all astroturf and picnic tables so, you know, got everything all this you know had that kind of soft play vibe um going on and the results were um that it, my company received what i would say were uh, mediocre there was a lot of good things we worked with some um brilliant agencies full, full of um brilliant people but I had a B2B company, a small B2B company there's no shopping basket in the corner there's no cool people at work there there's no surfers on the website um no one gives a toss about getting a um, testimonial from my company. And this is the this is the solid truth. Had I used these companies and I was, you know, John Lewis as opposed to John Keating, um, very different experience. Would have got access to some top tier talent and and, and all that jazz. And um, yeah, the, the results were were um, poor at best. Now I have to take some accountability um, for that. I have to hold the mirror up to um, myself. And I definitely do. I'm the common denominator within those relationships. Um, I was, you know, early 30s. I'd never grown a seven-figure business at that point. I didn't know what I was doing. So as much as I wasn't a pain in the ass client, although I didn't think I was, I was, you know, you can imagine we've all, we've all got them. Um, 
I probably could have supported more. I just didn't have the experience to know how to handle a digital agency relationship. So I'll take 50% of the blame um, for these mediocre results. But I'll tell you, the agencies that we use have never taken any blame or never hold the mirror up to themselves at any point um, and reflected on any of this, um, I've convinced. So, you know, <laughs> long introduction, long story short, we essentially took the good bits about those agency relationships and kept them, and there were some great bits, chopped out the bad and realized that, you know, there's there's got to be a better way to help the the little guy um, out there in the marketplace that go up against these these people with um, big deep pockets. So they kind of you can start to see how the um, the thought process for the for helping the underdog. Of course, underdogs lose ninety nine times out of hundred. That's not a very good um, proposition. But Dark Horse being an unexpected winner, the underdogs that win. Yeah. Dark Horse kind of uh, was formed towards, um, well, the right at the end of um, 2019. And in terms of the um, the position of it, um, well, it, like I just mentioned, it's, it's, it's to give those those little guys a chance to, to help them take on the bullies in the industry where we, we have, they haven't got a lot of uh, a lot of hope. They're in a bit of a, a dark space. Fundamentally, once you you know you, you cut through it to its basic level. We're like every other search marketing agency. And what I mean by that is we make people a shitload of money in PPC, paid social, SEO. There's no USPs like most other agencies. We've not tried to carve out a niche or anything like that and say, you know, well, we're the best PPC agency for pig farmers in the UK and all this kind of stuff that, you know, a lot of books and consultants would, would um, you know, um, lend you towards. At the top level, that is what we are, a really good search marketing agency. But where I think that... Um, Maybe we go a little bit further than your average. I don't know. Is that there's a kind of a layered approach. It's a bit like in Inception. If you've ever seen the movie, you go, you go, you go down the layers and you, and you get into a more kind of richer, immersive narrative environment. Um, the technical aspect, the processes and things like that, that's not really um, my bag. Um, and my other business is a very um, GDPR-focused compliance business. I want a little bit more fun, frankly, with um, you know now of a certain age. I don't want to be making... You know, going on to do more business in the future, which are you know allow me to be a bit more free and libertarian with um, with the positioning. So we, we go down to this 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 kind of story driven layer, and in here, um, every, what I've described about PPC, paid social, and, and the underdog. You know, we have a for a better expression, a kind of a, a dark horse cinematic universe. It's very grand, you know, um, too grand for an agency of our size for sure. But we know we know who all the characters are. We know there is this the, the drug of mediocrity in the streets. You know, Gotham City is our is is our marketplace, is our industry. The police are Google. Um, I won't say too much about how um, the authorities can be manipulated or what. But you know, the mob bosses are other agency owners. The ecoms um, uh, owners are our customers, and they are customers and clients, not partners, not any other agency bollocks like that. Um, we, we know truth and. And straightforward and is is exactly um what we stand for you know these are the guys that are going home um these ladies and gentlemen that are going home of an evening against this oppre uh, you know oppressive kind of competition you know down in the kind of um enser air whilst whilst the, the the agency owners are hobnobbing at the uh, at the top in in, in the clean air and we're the, you know we want we want them to to light up that signal to hold up that flare and for say look you know we want hope we want, we, want, we want an equalizer. We want an anti-hero to, uh, to come and help us. And this is the kind of narrative-driven element to um, what Dark Horse is about. Um, you know, it's about righting the wrongs to the digital marketing industry. It's about holding up um, a mirror um, to the industry. And there's one final layer to that. And I know you probably want me to shut up to get a word in it, and I apologize for that. But it's just, there's one kind of really important final layer to the uh, positioning once you go down from the the top normal technical stuff, PPC, paid social, SEO, the story-driven analogy section underneath it, the universe, which is, a, for me, a far easier thing to understand and relate to rather than, you know, ROAS and all the metrics and, and numbers and, and shit at the top. There's, just, there's the bit at the bottom, which is the empathy and the human element, which is where I think Dark Horse tries to... Um, is, is, very, is very important to us. And it's because... You know, people don't come to work for Dark Horse to learn about digital um, marketing for me. I'm not a head of PPC or a head of SEO or anything like that. I've never done a day's 
you know, been paid for a day's work in those uh, industries in my life. But what I have been is I have been a customer of these agencies. I have been a customer of these agencies who have celebrity agency owners who speak at Brighton SEO and get applauded off the stage as if they're one, you know, as godly type of people. And I've paid them money. I know what it's like to pay those people £4,000 a month and what you actually get for your £4,000 a month. So as much as LinkedIn and everyone like that, we're just like seals clapping these, these um, ladies and gentlemen. They, you know, I've got kind of um, a very, uh, you could call it passionate if you're a bit of a wanky word, but a kind of a, you know, a fire in my belly, probably a better way to put it, of, of being more and um, being better. So specifically, you know, PPC and SEO and paid social ad have really have to um, can really make a difference to, to people's to people's lives, good or bad. Um, Dark Horse is a collection of people. I look after you know or try to make these good decisions to to help the the dreams and aspirations to people that work here. And likewise, our customers, the ecom um, owners, they do exactly the same. And they can, you know, we have the power, we have the responsibility to look after their investment. And this human element is, is empathy. They have a go home of an evening, have a row with their partner because ROAS is like, you know, minus two because of things that we have or we haven't done. Um, they, you know, their kids who have been coming, have been waiting for them to come home from school just to play Lego or guess who, or, or you know, um, show show daddy um, or mummy their gold note, which which they've, you know, very proud of. And I've sent them to bed early because of the stress, the anxieties, the pressure which I'm feeling of, of running the business. Um, this is what this is what doesn't get discussed about or talked about in digital marketing is the, is the human element. We're too too busy focusing on uh, monthly reports and trend lines and bar charts, but you know what? It's actually the people behind that is is the most important thing to us. So I have this thing in my head about protecting sandcastles, which you don't talk about on the website or the visual identity or anything like that. But when things are going well, it allows you the chance for us with the e-coms owners and our customers to help them create memories, to help them take their family or friends or colleagues or whoever it is on holiday. And, and I know with my particular circumstance, you know, I've only got so many years before I speak to my son and daughter and say, do you want to build a sandcastle? And they say, no, piss off. Dad. I don't want to you know, pick up my iPad. You know, time is, is precious and short. And direct marketing, sorry, digital marketing agency, well, in fact, any marketing agency for that matter, we have an obligation and we have a responsibility to deliver for these people beyond the numbers, the metrics and the trend lines. And the dark horse story, the narrative, the, uh, um, this kind of immersive element that I'm not doing a very good job of, of trying to get across is to show that it's it's more than case studies. It's more than 338% ROAS, um, good or bad. So our kind of complicated positioning and sometimes it, you know, it might get lost in the, in the noise. It's quite difficult to understand at times, um, but it is it is quite layered, and it'll sure it'll probably evolve over time. So there's a lot a lot to unpack there. Yeah, we'll sorry. It. No, it's great. I I think how I described it to you before we came before we came on air was I'd said how would I describe the you know the, the dark horse website was if 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 my chemical romance was an agency brand. I think Dark Horse would be it. And you mentioned there about some of the language you use. You know, it's fairly intense. It's quite rebellious, um, frustrated at times. You know, some of the some of the language and choice of words in there kind of you know shows that it's quite a lot of frustration and and defiance. And so it's everything you've described and, and comes across. Where did it come from? So obviously you've you know you've got yeah. you've got that kind of you know that that pretext and how you feel about things and what you've tried to create culturally with with the agency and how it stands out. How did you arrive at the at the direction you've gone? Because it is quite dark. It is quite it is quite twisted. It's definitely sure. um, definitely stands out. How did you arrive at that kind of particular style of direction of positioning? Well, yeah, so uh, probably two parts. To that well, for, for for clarity, it's really easy. As much as I've lived through it, so that those you know let's let's call it the the, the darkness and those dark times and, and and those kind of examples that I've. Uh, that I've mentioned, um, I can just pull those out of my head. I can just pull those out of my memories. But in terms of, you know, that, that doesn't, for argument's sake, create a um, a visual identity that, that we have. You know, I could quite easily just create a paint-by-numbers agency and talk about culture and community and, and everything else till the cows come home and, and just, just do it the, um, the normal way. Um, but, you know, I'm not really interested in doing that because truth and integrity, for the reasons that I've 
mentioned earlier are absolutely massive. And I actually doubt, in the same way as kind of, you know, personal branding, and that's a topic I'm not going to get too much into because it's another thing that I'd, you know, I can, I can go, off, go off on. But all agencies sound the same. All people sound the same on LinkedIn. In this diverse industry and marketplace that we have, if we all look and, and sound the same. And by definition to me, in the simpleton, that means that it has to be kind of uh, inauthentic and, and, and manufactured. So I'm not interested in, in, in any of that, so to speak. So all I did, I mean, I, you know, p people being a, a central theme, um, it's just pull on kind of, um, I'm product of, of nature and nurture. We, we all are, is, is what things are important to me. Uh, what things bring about an emotion and, for me, it sounds a bit, uh, you know, crazy to maybe say, but um, my cultural references are, are movies and films and music and uh, less so now, but uh, books and, and all these different types of things of what have had an effect on me. It, it, sport, you know, um, the up, the highs and lows of, of being a, a part of a, you know, a tribal fan base and, and, and things like that, you know, the, uh, going against adversity in, in various different times leads you, you know, you just... You just think of things that that move me, and it isn't, you know, like the, like the guys in the office will hate my music choices because it's not three hundred and fifty beats per minute, like you know, I'm showing my age here, but like you know, Sash or any other bullshit like that, which I can't. Believe. Everyone sounds like chipmunks, and I can't understand it. You know, I want I want to listen to music which can almost move me to tears and stuff like that. And maybe it's because I'm a parent and I'm a bit of an old hack, and I've been you know through through a fair things that, you know, I mean. Uh, any old music can can do that to me uh, these days, but um, yeah, it, the, specifically the cultural references, popular cultural references, I would say, are are things like Batman. Um, as I said, you know, the cinematic universe which I described, Gotham and the playground and the antihero that that kind of um, speaks to me. So it's very easy to go around that um, music. Um, you know. Pan Zimmer is, is, is a kind of classic, but for me, you know, whether it's the Blue Planet or whether it's or it's whatever, you listen to you listen to his music and you feel it. You know, uh, the, the, an idea is it's you know it's it's um it's the thought which drives action, and 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 these um, inspirations drive action, and and the website is probably a um, an outcome of this, and we didn't want to be in the logo roulette race. So, you know, the pursuit to what is quote unquote normal kind of leads us um, to where we are. But certainly I wanted a forensic quality to it. Um, I wanted a kind of um, a darkness to it. Um, Batman is certainly an influence, um, but it had to be a story driven narrative that I can relate to from my life. That website and, you know, we can talk about this maybe later. Is it is it is not a complete reflection of everyone who works for Dark Horse? It can't be. It's just that it's just an impossibility. But what it is is probably a reflection for mostly of, of where I am now. Okay, I mean because the the language you use, like the very very top of the website, anyone lands on it, you you know your opening sentences. We we help aspiring e commerce companies parade the bodies of their competition while swimming in money. Right. That's very provocative. And it's also really straight to the point. You know, we talk about, you know, a lot of agency positionings can be we're an award winning this or we do this. And they're fairly, they're fairly generic. They're very samey. Whereas, you know, you've, you've cut straight to the chase there around, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll trump the competition and yep. we'll deliver ultimately, which is why people come to you is they want to make money. And by calling that out is a, is a very provocative um, way of doing it. And, yeah, I guess that's what I really like about the positioning is it's it cuts through. It cuts through and it's really strong and really bold. Um but you know, has it differed at all? Was there has there has it always been this way? Was there a slightly watered down version before or has it always been this kind of, you know, yeah. in your face and kind of direct? Um see so yeah, I'm I'm probably, you know, wrong game. I don't think it is that in your face and direct. And I think, you know what, it, a lot of um and CVs are a good analogy here. Like I want, I, I want to speak to customers, and as I said, they are customers and not partners. You know, my butcher is not a partner. I pay him or her money to receive meat. 
don't know why the fucking agency is agency kind of you know landscape that we've got where we give everyone different give everything different names to people truth is is, is absolutely apparent same with um, ambitious companies you know you mentioned what we said about i don't know parading dead bodies or whatever it was that's our, our, um, on our website you know this is how people think when they're talking into a pub you know if we walked into the pub and talked to each other like we do on cvs or in business speak and, and talked about forward thinking and synergy and stuff like that you'd be like you just walk away from the person stood next to you so why do between the hours of between the hours of nine till five do we all of a sudden forget our you know normal rational way of, of living that you know it's like the space time continuum breaks as soon as we enter an office or 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 you know say in those hours i just don't understand it like i said maybe i'm not clever enough to live these dual lives and and you know pieces um all together um but yeah it's you know the the notion of being the dark horse helping the underdog has, has always been the the case with you know the the existing website and the existing visual identity i would say that was you know or, or i i would i would understand if people thought in the past that that was um direct we've just kind of overlaid the story driven narrative a bit more of the immersive experience to it um but frankly we've always i think that the, the the correct terminology would be a conversational tone of voice i think any of anything else is just bonkers i don't understand why you would have anything other than the tone of voice of how you speak and then you know the buzzword at the moment is authenticity i mean how crazy is it to have a website which says xxx award-winning helping ambitious companies which is which is just ridiculous ambitious company ambitious means give us lots of money that's what ambitious means it means we don't want to help people who, who can't afford us what, what are we doing we, you know we're starting off relationships with people based on fabricated nonsense on exaggerations and, and stuff like that you know i don't want to work like that um yeah so it's it's it, 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 it possibly amps a little bit from a visual um, side of things. Maybe the, the language and tone of voice is, is probably a little bit more brand consistent with those types of um, visuals, so it, does, it doesn't kind of fall apart. Um, but the overall messaging is the same. Yeah, and do you find it, is it an easy brand to be consistent with across different platforms, both your own, third parties? You know, for example, if you look on, if you look on LinkedIn, um, yeah. you know, all the team members have got, you know, the same kind of, you know, facial effects on their profiles going on. Uh, and so it's, it's very clear, you know, that someone works for Dark Horse. Is that, is that, is it, is it an easy brand to no. kind of be consistent with? No, rock hard, I'd say, um, you know, what isn't, um, that, that's, that's worth, um, pursuing. So, you know, obviously there's many people that work for Dark So a brand is, is part, you know, is, is the kind of collective of, of, of everyone involved in it. Um, but there's people here who are, you know, 22 that don't have kids and have never run a business and all these different types of stuff. And, and that, you know, and how can they possibly have the same emotional input that I do? And I don't, and I don't expect it to. <clears throat> so when you've got someone at the, um, at the helm for want of a crap expression, I completely understand why I would be more invested than, than the average um so it, within the agency it's quite a difficult brand to i mean we have buy-in um but there's buy-in um and that you would you know if i was you know we are talking externally of course but but you know if this was a linkedin post you would say oh yeah everyone loves it buying 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 blah 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 you know because everything's perfect on linkedin but the reality, no, the reality is not not the case um it's it, it's definitely hard you know does, does on LinkedIn itself, um, does it lend itself to certain channels? Um, absolutely not. Because what, what uh, for me, it, as a, my understanding of, of that question is, does the truth lend itself to being well-received on LinkedIn? <laughs> no, we, we all know that. The currency of LinkedIn is blowing smoke up everyone's asses. It's tagging upwards to people with, with larger follower numbers and saying, do you agree? And, and asking for them to put another 10 people with large followers on the post and stuff like that. We all know what, what makes the, you know, the algorithm uh, turn on LinkedIn. And it's to help LinkedIn get more engagement. So, you know, Microsoft um, ultimately, you know, get a bigger fan, a bigger base, customer base and make more money. It's not for people to tell the truth. The people that tell the truth on LinkedIn get shunned. So if you kind of look at um, the, the quote unquote, the success of say our brand on certain social media channels, um, I would understand why there are people. There would be a lot of people out there who'd think, mm, "No, let's play it. Let's play it safe." Um, which, 
I'm not really interested in too much. I feel you have to push forward and be resilient and stick to your guns. And and we, you know, I mean, we do well, but we will get to that even cleaner air still as, as we, you know, as, as it kind of um, settles a little bit. It's, it's fairly, it's fairly new um, in that sense, but no, it, it doesn't lend itself well to personal branding, LinkedIn, um, you know, pictures of yourself in, in a, thirsty selfies in lifts <laughs> and how do you so how do you how do you personally um as a founder kind of manage that transition between having your your dark horse you know brand and just you know bring that yep. consistency but also match with your own kind of personality and style is, did you find there's a is there is there a uh, is there a cadence between the two is there like a crossover point how, how do you well, handle that um they're, they're both, yeah, there is, there is a cadence. They're both, they're both, personally, for me, it's quite easy because it's quite similar. I'm, I'm quite you know, intertwined with the, 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 the brand, the tone of voice and, and all that jazz. For other people um, within the agency and, uh, and how we're received, I, well, I'm, fun, I'm just not going to sacrifice the principle, my, um, my principles and beliefs and, and going back. Everything goes back to the genesis of Dark Horse and why it exists, which it sounds ridiculous because I'm you know, sounding like them in Start With Why. Um, which I don't want to in any way, shape, or form, but for, for actually, honestly, it, it kind of makes sense. So I'm not going to play these these games. And if we're not well received, then so be it. It'll be on my head. You know, I asked the, the team to trust me with a lot of these things, you can imagine. Um, and I think we will, you know, achieve our, our aims and objectives by sticking true to what we... I don't believe that you can be taken seriously talking about truth and integrity if you, you know fold like origami at the first point if you don't get 100 likes when but someone puts a picture of a, of a puppy up and their dog or talks about mental health and they get a thousand likes we've got to do better simple mm -hmm. as that is it for everyone the brand or no. do you do you find you know how, how do prospects and clients respond to it yeah i mean look well, you know um I mean, some of the things that we're trying to achieve is is polarization by, yeah. by definition. So, um, you know, mission complete in 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 that sense. Um, there's a lot of love. There's a lot of love. Uh, I wouldn't say there's, there's there's hate for it. I think there's it, it's you're always going to get that middle band, aren't you? So the prospects which think, oh my god, I'm not going to go anywhere near these people. Um, they're not going to tell us, frankly. So that kind of middle eighty percent, you just don't hear from. They're not going to uh, ring up to say, oh, by the way. Uh, I was going to use you for PPC, but I don't like your branding. So now I'm not. All right, brilliant. So let's just put that, you know, 80% to uh, one side. In terms of the um, the people that love it, yeah, we get a lot of compliments. One of, one of, this, this is going to sound a bit, a bit silly, but one of the eight, and I remember saying this to the team, in asking for their trust, because they've not, half of them, have, um, I know that, you know, they would prefer something different, um, is... I wanted to create something, and it sounds a bit ridiculous, I can't believe I'm going to say this in quote, you know, pseudo public, is that could theoretically be studied. One of the briefs is that I want to create a website where they will talk about in university lectures, and it'll be like onions and layers, and you can peel it. And however much time you want to spend on that website and, on, and looking at this visual identity, you can get further and further into it and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, in, I probably think in that case, we didn't go far enough. But we have been talked about. We've been showcased, you know, unbeknown to me, um, as presentations about tone of voice and about how to um, put you um, put yourself forward. So we wanted to bring emotion and, and drama um, to a relatively dry um, subject. Um, we've achieved we've achieved that, and then people will tell us that frequently in private. In terms of the industry, we get a lot of compliments from the industry in private which says a lot in the DMS. Oh, by the way, I absolutely love your branding. I absolutely love your positioning. Don't do it in public because obviously of what we stand for, we're quite anti establishment. We're quite anti the tradition, you know, all the elephants in the room about digital marketing, all the problems that exist that we don't talk about, about digital marketing. We tend to do that. So they're not going to come out in public and say that. And, and they don't, there's a lot of indifference on the, uh, in the public, but the, the private stuff says the same. We've had a client, I've had a client leave. Um, I've had a client nearly leave, and this would have been both of those two combined would have been about ten percent of the monthly revenue. 
um, one client left because they were swearing on the website. I mean, they were swearing on the previous website, which is bonkers, but uh, hey-ho. Um, and uh, yeah, it is, it is divisive. Even within, you know, even within the team, I didn't involve the team, the, the wider team, the whole, the whole company during the creation of this because I, I know I would have bottled it. If, mm -hmm. I, if I'd have shown this, and there have been various iterations of this and all this kind of stuff, it, it, it didn't just like pop out like it, like it did. I remember showing the team almost like what you could have won. I actually showed them the, the five different avenues we were going down and I'd already known which one we were chosen and, and was half developed and, and stuff like that. And then I just kind of did a straw poll. like, well, who would choose the winning one? And I think it's about, you know, 28 people in the room. About two people put their hands up. <laughs> and I'm like, right, okay. Well, you just have to trust me on this. And and in the start, a bit, bit of pushback from in the team. I think the, the team were quite vocal with telling me what people were saying on the negative. Oh, look, this client said that they don't like it. They don't like comic books. I'm like, right, what do they want me to do? I'm not going to put a brand new website up or a brand new visual identity and just redraft everything because someone doesn't like comic books and stuff like that. I mean, the whole point of Dark Horse is to show integrity. Just because we get a little bit of adversity and negative feedback, we go, oh, a ball start then. Let, let's put up something sparkly with unicorns on it. It's like, no, we're going to go all in. Um, did, um, did any team members leave? Did anyone vote with their feet that they didn't like it? No. Um, no, not yet. Um uh, <laughs> I mean, like, we, we, you know, I've, I've had, um, as part of an extension of the visual identity and our branding, I mean, we're, we're currently doing a direct mail um, campaign where, you know, well, business doesn't have to be dull, uh, where we're sending something severed out in the post. I'm not going to go too much into it. You can, you can imagine. Uh, I, I think it was Okay. I think I think I think it's you know it demonstrates impact. There's a bit of fun. It, it it's it fits in with our branding. We had one guy who rang in, started a conversation, did his job. Um, we might end up doing PPC for him in the future. We had we had um, one guy who said he thought it was a scam and threatened to call the police, which I think says more about him than um, it says about us. To be fair, um, but yeah, our sales um, team were unsure about following this up, so I'm doing it, and that's okay. Um, it's a rough ride, but I am steadfast and believe, genuinely believe that we are doing the right thing and that by telling the truth, even if it's uncomfortable, blunt force truth is the right way to go. Yeah. And I'll die on that hill, I think. <laughs> just, just staying on the topic of, uh, of, of clients and prospects for a second. Do you find do you attract any particular type of brand, either, you know, brands who have a similar kind of look and feel or perhaps it's more of a, um, you know, like a, a cultural matchup? Do you find some of the some of the individuals you're working with, you know, almost identify in themselves, you know, what your, you know, your kind of brand style is and your tone of voice and that attracts them? Do you see a kind of consistencies between who who comes through and who you're working with? Well, we should do. Uh, and we do. And, and that's, you know, ultimately what it's there for and why it exists. I'm a business owner who's used digital marketing agencies um, and have, have learned from that experience. We're speaking to business owners who are selecting digital marketing um, agencies and uh, may have been pissed off with various different digital marketing agencies. So it should speak to um, certainly with the story for a certain types of people. And it does. I mean, do I think... Um, that, you know, Jim and Jean, who have a third generation family e coms company selling rattan furniture, is going to look at our website and think, Do you know what, these are, these are guys are spot on for me. No, they're going to pick a really boring beige or gray website that says 330% ROAS on something else. And they're going to go, yeah, I don't know what that means, but it sounds quite good. Um, and they're going to, they're going to, um, engage with the logical side of their brain um i mean you'll you'll probably appreciate this having having looked at things but emotion is really a key thing because i felt it i know it exists in terms of um for me doing business and 
you know, being successful or not. And we want people to select Dark Horse. They've already filtered us down. If they're speaking to us, we've already spoke to their logical side of the brain. They've already typed in four bedroom house into right move with a front and back garden and got a list of 25 at the 25 of them. They've already done that. That's why they're speaking to us. And then that's why they're speaking to three or four other agencies. But it's going to be one of those agencies. It's going to be one of those houses that they walk into and they walk into that kitchen and they think, you know what? I can see myself living here. They all have the right parameters. And that is what Dark Horse should be. When an, when a, when an e-coms um, business owner or head of marketing walks into Dark Horse and speaks to us and gets a feel for us on what we're about, I would like to think that they should think this is the one which I connect to. And the other side of the brain affirms you know, or validates their, um, their logical side. I don't even know if that answered your question now, Dana. Yeah, no, I think it does. I think it does. Um, how far does the, um, the theater, I guess I could call it the theater of the kind of the, the brand, yeah. you know, how far does that extend from, you know, through the site, through initial inquiry, when you're working with a prospect, how far does that kind of, does yep. go through when you meet them? Does, you know, obviously you don't have, you know, that the branded collateral that you use, you know, decks, all that kind of stuff, templates are all going to maintain it. But how far does it kind of extend and, and maintain? Not far enough. Um, it's the, well, you would expect the truthful answer, otherwise I'd be a complete hypocrite on all of this. Um, which is a habit, isn't it? You know, when people say, oh, can I be honest? It's like, well, yeah, what the, what is everything else you've said to me a lie? Um, so yeah, apologies for that. No, not far enough. Um but the, the, the rebrand is, what is it? I don't know. I think it's either February or March. So it's not been like, you know, it's, it's only been a um, a few months. So for me, as I say, with emotion being a, um, and theatre being quite, a, I think you use that word, it is, you know, very apt. Um, there should be a Disney Q experience of using Dark Horse. You know, you were, you were, and, you know, we have conversations and things like that. And, um, you know, I won't go into too much details, but maybe omni-channel. I don't know. I'm not clever enough to know what this kind of um, uh, stuff is. But sights, sounds, music, ambience, everything should be a what you expect if you come to a a meeting at Dark Horse. I mean, for, you know, we have something called the Dark Horse difference um, in terms of processes and things like that. And I'm my head of PPC, head of SEO, head of paid social. They are tasked with, you know, doing things and looking at things in a, um, a different way to um, the average. And they will do that. I'm not going to talk about that um, today, frankly, because I don't understand um, a lot of the stuff that, that they do. Um, so the process side is is taking care of it. But the more kind of brand and marketing and positioning side is, no, we, we, we don't do enough. You know, there's no, um, I don't have two Grim Reapers sat over the shoulder to uh, welcome everyone as they as they come into the. Oh, yeah, that's obviously been a, a silly example, but why does it have to be? I want I want people to remember any interaction that they um, have with Dark Horse, good or bad, the majority uh, of good. But look, we're a PPC and SEO, and and we're a search marketing agency. We do a lot. There's only so far you can actually go theoretically in terms of uh, in terms of touch points. Yeah, work, cool. work in progress, I would say on that, Dan. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. Um, you know, you, you said there about being, I think you said being memorable, or I might have had that in my head. But I think you know, aside from standing up for something, being memorable and interrupting someone's day and making you stand out, certainly from an agency in a really, really competitive industry marketplace, call it what you will. You know, you, you have to stand out for something. I, I say this a lot when I talk about propositions or about positioning. You know, you've got the you've got the value you create, you've got the problem you solve, and you need to be memorable. It's such a it's such a key thing, you know, being trying to be everything to everyone, trying to be too broad, you end up standing for nothing. And I think that's where, you know, for me, a lot of agencies fall down is they they can almost bottle being being too too narrow and going, this is what we stand for this is how narrow and deep we're going to go. And this is how we're going to be memorable. And even the ones who do do that, the temptation then to almost, you know, move out of that middle lane that you're in, the temptation is really hard. How, how do you handle that? The temptation is, is there, is there, is there even a temptation to maybe go, let's soften it for the sake of this, or let's move over yep. here for the sake of that. You know, how rigidly do you find you stick to what you stand for? I'm guessing right. pretty rigidly because you, you have to, yeah, yeah. You, you, once you kind of, you know, put uh, put your calls to the mast, you'd, you'd look silly not to. It is tough. 
as I said, even internally, I doubt a lot of what I do. Um, I think I think you'd be a little bit odd if if, if you you, um, you didn't. Internally, we you know I, I get not pushed back, but let's call it pulling back to um, to the middle lane. Um, externally, the resilience that you need is difficult. You know, the build up to the release of the rebrand, I would say, was reasonably stressful. Um, getting negative feedback, you know, fragments sake, oh. I had, I had one guy who's, I mean, just honestly, um, he said, we were going to use you guys for PPC or whatever it was, paid social or, or SEO. Um, and then I looked at your LinkedIn profiles and saw you guys had face paint on. And I thought, well, I can't put you, I can't put you in front of our um, FD with face paint on to him to sign it off. And I was thinking, I was listening to this. So I was thinking, are you, are you okay? Um, so we clearly, did the best job of all the agencies in, you know, in, in showing you, you know, a better outcome with our processes and the very smart people that you've met. And, and bear in mind, we don't turn up, you know, one of the things about pushing things further, we don't actually turn up to meetings with face paint. And oh, you don't. You know, no, we don't. Um, not today as well. It's too hot. Um, <laughs> it's, um, but no. Um, and yeah, and then to think, do you know what? I'm going to sacrifice what I believe is the, a genuinely quality uh, business decision because these guys have got face paint on. I mean, it might as well have just been a, you know, a tattoo conversation, which you know, obviously should have stuck on LinkedIn for the um, for the engagement. Thinking back in 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 hindsight, but yeah, no. It, frequently, the temptation is to be pulled back, um, and we are not going to do it look i'm not an idiot if if all of a sudden our revenues dropped from you know x to next to nothing and we were making huge losses then it's my duty to uh look at things on behalf of everyone here you know i've, I've, I've got an obligation to everyone the amazing team that works here to say it's an honor to work with these guys um and i'll do that but why i i do have a belief that we're we're everything that we stand for in our position and the way we market ourselves like almost almost an anti-marketing approach uh, you know we didn't we didn't make the rules you know telling the truth should not be refreshing or dangerous or pulling yourself back to the middle lane i mean if you just analyze this for a second where are we as an industry or is you know rephrase the question a reframe i mean that's interesting um a reframe seems to be a new buzzword at the moment which means to just come up with a a bollocks deception to something to the actual truth i don't know where this has come from but why are we talking about reframed no let's just say it like it is what, what we're saying is do you, do you ever feel the need to step back from telling the truth it's like mm, that's a rather depressing place to be so no i can't and i won't and we won't i should say um and maybe that's the reason that i'm running a seven figure agency and not an eight figure agency um but hey ho but that consistency will will pay off in the end. You know the old yeah, we'll, we'll see. The old cliche about you know you 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 pick a you know you 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 pick at what you, you stay the course of what you're doing and you will be successful in it. It'll don't deviate from it and it will take you know take might take short term might term long term but eventually you'll you'll get there and consistency is the key in anything like this. Um, you you know you must see a lot of other agencies positioning and um, what similarities do you do you see in the industry? Uh, obviously, you know, you've, you're intentionally trying to, you know, you stand out a lot from that for lot, all the reasons you've, you know, you've shared already, but what kind of similar similarities do you tend to see between agencies in the industry at the moment in terms of how they position themselves and, and how they talk? What's a question? Um, yeah, a little, especially, little big especially, one especially to me, as I mean, like this could get me into a lot of trouble, which I'm going to, um, <laughs> high, level, no, high, high level, non-legal version. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, no names, no that kind of jazz. No, I, I totally get it. Um, I mean, a couple of kind of examples of it. Yes, I see lots of similarities, and I'll, I'll go through. I'll go through a few of them. One particular kind of tangible example is that when we were, you know, looking at the branding options and, and things like that, we had a. I don't know if you can 
imagine but you know those kind of old star wars posters where they had a picture of yoda and darth vader but it was like a, a collage of small individual film cells but when you zoom out it's a picture of darth vader you know yeah you to see him in like hmv and stuff like that back in the day um we had the word agency as one of these photo um collages and it was all teals pastel pinks you know it looked like a refreshers advert of um social media posts which the agencies had put out honestly it was you're looking at it and you're thinking oh my god th this is what we are like there was there was nothing strong within it whatsoever it was all 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 the same so our, our original post about when we launched our rebrand it was like yeah we're opting out of logo roulette and i still believe that is the case for most agencies if you swap the the logo where's my, on this on, the, on this side um, and put everyone else's logo on any other agency page, what website are, are you actually on? I'm not sure. One of the, the, the aims for um, Dark Horse um, collateral and content and copy and all, and all that kind of jazz is that if you take away our, uh, our branding and our visual identity and it's just a Microsoft Word document, you should be able to know that you are reading um, something or, or viewing or whatever it may be, something um, from Dark Horse. So for me, most agencies... Just focus on the logical side of the brain. They focus on the ROAS, the case studies, the metrics, the awards, all that kind of stuff, which says basically a willy waving exercise as like, we're bigger and better than you, blah, blah, blah. And just maintain this pyramid, uh, this kind of accepted agency pyramid of a few good agencies at the top, slightly more mediocre ones and slightly more, you know, tough ones. Nice and um, neat and controlled. I see a lot of, I think the, the, there's a lot of blurring between, I actually think as well, you know, we, we've kind of moved away from company branding and positioning. And I know there's, 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 there's great companies like you, like you guys and, and, and other um, consultancies and, and things that, that, that help a lot of uh, agency owners. And I totally agree with everything that, that you guys all say um, about standing out. But I think we either read it and can't be asked to action it, and, you know, think, oh, it's a great book and uh, whatever, but, you know, just pop it to one side with another, you know, Simon Sarnik's book and everything else. And another, you know, and take a picture of, of our bookcase on LinkedIn. Look, Agency Book Club. Just It's, it's at half past one after the running club and the yoga club and blah, blah, blah. We've kind of, um, or we'd kind of, I think there's been a, a general focus to more of the personal branding stuff. It's all got a little bit messy. I think we're in the age of the, celebrity agency owner which i think is absolutely crazy and bonkers you know there's certain agency owners out there which i know more about them than i do about their agency and what they stand for and what they're branding i can think of you know one or two in, in particular rock star agency owners that go on brighton seo and if they you know if they belch they get uh, a thousand you know people on 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 the feet and stuff i know you know i know exactly how old they are because they start every post by saying hi i'm x I'm like Right, and um, you know, it's all about them. I don't know anyone who actually works there, but I know everything there is to know about them. And it's usually involving where they go on holiday. I know all the holiday destinations that they've been to, any time that they've got a glass of champagne in the hand, or blah blah blah. And I'm thinking, but the annoying thing is for me is that that actually works. So I actually respect that. I just don't understand why LinkedIn is probably an easy one to understand as a whole, but um, the branding and this positioning is accepted right, from, from people who, who want to aspire to, to um, be like these people. You shouldn't know anything about Dark Horse MD or Founder, in my opinion. What you should know is everything about what we stand for and the results that we get, um, the people, the brilliant people that work for. And it's an honor for me to work with these guys. This whole, you know, I think there's a lot of inauthentic, reactive stuff within the agency marketplace which seeps into everyone's um yeah. branding and positioning I'll give you a quick example like we talk about culture possibly more than anything else these days if you look at everyone's website and put it into the way back machine pre-covid and then look for their culture pages see how many you can find roughly the square root of jack i'll tell you why we all talk about it it's because of the fucking candidate market we were dictated to talk about it because we got our asses kicked by candidates having 10, 25,000 agencies all coming after them and, you know, and everyone trying to hire the same people. 
So what do we do? We talk about culture. We talk about community. I don't, you know, if, if we were that bothered about it, maybe we would, we should have been talking about it before, but a lot of our things, um, you know, pay freelancers quickly, all the tropes, pay interns a shit ton of money. Well, why weren't we doing that in 2018? Why weren't we talking about it then? No, we're talking about it now because we have to talk about it. Like, mm -hmm. Be proactive with your positioning um, as opposed to uh, reactive. So I think a lot of agencies, are, um, are, that's probably the, the, the thing that I see. I think a lot of agencies, they try and tell you what conclusion to make from their posts, their views, their, you know, fragments, they, they put a, everything's agenda driven. They'll put pictures of themselves, you know, at social left, right, and center. You know, everyone who was at the social was there. No one else needs to see it. This is for external validation only. Everyone's got agendas. It's either talent acquisition or talent um, retention or client acquisition or client retention. That's it. Every single LinkedIn post can be traced back to that. I want people to see through that. Dark Horse is about truth. It's about integrity. Break down the fourth wall. We're not telling you what to think. Just look at it yourself. Other agencies will tell everyone, this is how you should think. This is how you should act. This is what you should aspire to be like. This, you need to be going on a holiday to Aruba and stuff like that. If you, you know, all these different types of things. Just make your own conclusions from all the data that you get. You know, the, the truth should not be refreshing. It should be boring and it should be the default. Do you think the, just going back to the point there about the kind of, you, you said celebrity agency owner, and yeah. do you think the two are interchangeable between John, John as founder and MD of Dark Horse and, you know, carrying across the brand continuity and John as a person building your own personal brand, personal profile, do you think the two are interchangeable? Do you think one should take priority over the another? Where, where do you kind of, where do you kind of sit on that? I sit in, I don't see how they are different because they shouldn't be because a personal brand is be you, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. whether um, MD founder, I, I am me. So what I don't understand is why agencies and agency owners all sound the same if we're all being you, because clearly I'm different to your average, well, not your average, but you know, I've got different viewpoints on, on certain things. So I absolutely, you know, nothing... Uh, yeah, it should be interchangeable. It should be, it should be the same. You know, if you're, if you're an agency owner, in my humble opinion, I mean, who am I to say? Who gives a shit what I think? You know, I would say to the agency owner, do whatever you want. Um, but if you're posting, like, the first comment on Justin Welch's post, saying, yeah, I agree, Justin. But, you know, just so, you know, on, on tagging upwards and tagging everyone with 30,000 followers into anything, is, you know, just have a word. Mm. Um, the biggest word for me at the moment is authenticity and authentic and this is what we pump out agency owners personal branders everyone in digital marketing everyone in marketing more than anything else for me again this goes back to being reactive um, it's something that we feel that we have to do that the market's asking us to do as opposed to proactive it, it's a reframe and god i hate that word like shell oil probably say sustainability I don't think there's any legal implication of saying this, probably, allegedly. Probably say sustainability more than any other um, company in the world, them and BP. What does that say? Personal branders and agency owners now talk about being authentic more than anything else. How authentic is your accountant? How authentic, you know, I'm, what, what are the values of your roofer? I don't know. I've never asked. I don't give a toss. But for some reason, agencies, we've created this microclimate of stuff that we feel that we have to talk about, values, this, purpose, that. My roofer just does a, a good job at changing slates, and I trust him. I don't think he's got any decal, decals on the inside of his, his van saying authentic, blah, 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 or anything posted like that, or an air freshener that says it like, hanging off his, you know, his, his, his mirrors. I find it odd. Brilliant. <laughs> um, final question, just before we finish, what advice would you have for anyone who's starting their own agency in the early stages of, of, of growing their agency when it comes to positioning, you know, when it comes to defining their proposition and their, and their brand, what advice would you have for them? Oh, right. Okay. 
different I need a question for you to finish on yeah yeah cool right if you want to make money then genuinely be different and and and, and bear in mind you are allowed to make money as an agency i know it's like a, it should be put in you know you have to put 10 pound in a swear jar if you say if you don't have a purpose of you know saving the world but if your purpose is actually to start a business to make money allowed in my book um yeah be different um which is easy said and done and for, for that and be authentic true to yourself by um, pulling on your own cultural references that have formed however you are today if you want to create a large following and have everyone you know say how amazing you are and stuff like that and you know get 500 likes per post and all that kind of stuff for argument's sake then look what's out there on linkedin get involved in that rat race join in and that also will lead to opportunities it's weird i think there's in fact thinking about it now out loud there's there's there's, there's two ways to do it this will lead to opportunities uh, undoubtedly um but it probably chances are it won't be you it will be the you that your audience wants or the you that's you know that you've read about in a book that, that's told you to um, to be like that um but yeah it's harder i think it's probably harder to make money when you're genuinely being yourself um genuinely standing for something because the establishment won't want you to do that they don't people won't want you to highlight things like you know civilization is built on questioning it's built on science it's built on maths it's built on numbers it's built on logic and you think about that you know we used to think the earth was flat and then someone questioned it and now we don't apologies to all the flat earthers out there you question something on linkedin or in 2023 with certain you know in the agency marketplace you get your comment deleted where does that lead us and stuff like that in terms of you know your path of lead okay there's path of least resistance path of least resistance play the game Put a picture of your dog, put loads of selfies out there, comment on Justin Welch's post, X and Y, hire a personal brander, have them um, like your posts and stuff like that, and you know, talk about community and culture. If if that, you know, if and if that's you as well, brilliant, you're gonna absolutely cane it. I can't comment on what it takes to grow um, you know, a the technical part of an agency. All I would say as well is in 2023, expect to have deep pockets as well because rightly or wrongly, the candidate market has changed everything. And if you really want to do top-level work, you have to hire top-level talent and rightly so, that has a value and that isn't cheap. Amazing. <laughs> yeah follow that advice that's gonna that's gonna help that one <laughs> sorry that's, no there was some great advice there and I, and I thank you so much for your for your your, your openness and honesty i expected nothing less uh and for your, your perspectives and you know sharing your experiences so far um thank you very much for everyone who's who's tuned in and is, is listening to this either has been live or if you're listening to this back on demand thank you very much uh, and john thanks again to yourself and for sharing the dark horse story if you're interested to talk about growing your agency or even reaching a stage where you'd like to consider your next options please do get in touch via linkedin or at cac.us um, please like and subscribe to the channel on youtube forward slash agency phonics to be notified of all future episodes uh, and thanks again to the team at sante group for sponsoring the podcast paul david and jenna especially for their continued support paul thank you again uh, and everyone else we'll see you on the next one <laughs>